H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to another video of H2K Infosys. So in this particular video, we will see the concept of collection API, application programming interface. In this collection API, we will see first of all, what are the basic difference between collections and arrays. Now, we have already uh, gone through the process of understanding the concept of arrays. Now, what is an array? Array is basically fixed in size. That means when we define an array, we have to define the element size of the array or in other words we have to define the row size and the column size for an array and based on the row size and column size we have to define the data inside the array so for example the array has an element size of three rows and two columns that means the element size is three into two six that means that array can hold only six data so it is a fixed uh, data based concept in which the number of data are dependent on the element size whereas collection are global in nature that means if we want to have a dynamic data structure or other in other words if we want to increase or decrease the number of data in in an in a collection we can do that that is why it, it is said that it is a global in nature uh, as far as arrays is concerned uh, uh, with respect to memories uh, arrays are not recommended to be used because the management of memories in arrays is bad in comparison to the collections collections the memory collections or the usage of memory rather in collection is recommended as far as performance is concerned arrays are better and if you compare arrays performance uh, with collections uh, uh, the performance of collections are not recommended to be used Next part is that arrays can hold only homogeneous data type elements. What do you mean by that? That means that if I declare an array as a string type or integer type, it can only hold data of string type and integer data type respectively. I cannot have an integer array and keep on putting data which are of string type or boolean type or float type or double type or long type. If I declare an array as long type, it has to have data which should be of long type should not have data which can be of integer type or your uh, boolean type or etc. Collections uh, can hold both homogeneous data and heterogeneous data. Homogeneous data means data of same type and heterogeneous data means it can have a different type of data in collection. There are uh, no underlying data structure for arrays uh, hence ready-made method support is not available. Since there are no un underlying data structures present in arrays, so ready-made method support is not available in arrays. But in terms of collection, every collection class is implemented based on some standard data structure. So obviously, ready-made methods are supported and is available for every requirement. As far as arrays is concerned, it can hold both primitive and objective types of data. So primitive data types and objective data types are supported by arrays collection can only hold objective type data not primitive type of data primitive type of data which precisely means uh, int is a primitive data type or long is a primitive data type or uh, double is a primitive data type but int int has a wrapper class called as integer that is called an object data type <clears throat> so this is what we mean by primitive data types and object data types so this is what is the difference between arrays and collection next is we will see the definition of collection and collection framework so what is collection it is nothing but if you want to represent a group of individual objects as a single entity so when we represent a group of individual objects as a single entity any object is an entity so we have a group of individual objects as a single entity then we should go for collection and what is the collection framework it defines several classes and interfaces which can be used to represent a group of individual objects as a single entity so 
what is a collection framework now framework by itself is nothing but uh, a boundary which is bounded by certain rules and regulations so if you want to use any kind of framework it can be any framework for example we have log4j framework or we have apache poi framework so if you want to use these kind of frameworks we have to adhere to the rules and conditions defined inside that framework and every framework will have classes and interfaces inside it similarly like in collection framework 2 we have several classes and interfaces and these classes and interfaces are specifically used to represent a group of individual objects as a single entity coming back to <coughs> the nine interfaces present in collection framework so that means there are nine interfaces present in the collection framework so let us go through each of these interfaces first is the collection interface now what is the collection interface this interface is used to represent a group of individual object as a single entity so this interface is basically used to represent a group of individual objects as a single entity then we have the second interface in collection framework it is called the list interface now what does the list interface do and what is the hierarchy of list interface list interface is a child interface of collection interface it is basically a child interface of which interface collection interface and list interface basically represents a group of individual objects as a single entity where it allows duplication of data and it allows some indexing so it allows indexing okay and it allows duplicate duplication of data so the general theory is that if you want to represent a group of individual objects as a single entity where we allow duplications of data and indexing is preserved then we should go for list interface so if list interface uh, supports indexing that is what it is then the index will start for zero coming back to the diagram of list interface this is how it looks like so if you see that collection collection is an interface by itself which is nothing but a group of individual objects represented by a single entity and collection is inherited by the list interface and that is why list interface is called the child interface and if you see the list interface it is this list interface is implemented by array list class by the linked list class by the vector class and vector class is inherited by a class called the stack class so stack class is a child of vector class vector class is implementing the list interface so obviously stack will also implement the list interface as far as number of classes present in list interface so number of classes which implements the list interface of array list linked list vector and stack now if you see that collection interface was released in 1.2 version of your jdk list interface was also uh, um, given out or other it was released with 1.2 version of java jdk array list was also released in the same version of jdk that is 1.2 linked list to 1.2 version it was released vector was and stack was released in 1.10 version of jdk but it was made to support or other it was made to uh, implement the list interface in the 1.2 version of jdk so this is how the list interface looks like so we have a list interface which has four classes implementing it array list linked list vector and stack stack actually is a uh, is a child of vector class and vector is implementing the list so in indirectly stack will use the methods abstract methods and the uh, other parts of the list interface indirectly let's go to the third interface present in collection framework the third interface is called the set interface now what is the set interface is basically also a child of the collection interface and if we understand what is and where is set interface used so if you want to represent a group of individual objects as a single entity where duplications of data is not allowed and indexing is not preserved then we should go for set interface so the primary difference between list interface and set interface is that list interface supports duplication of data so set interface does not support duplication of data 
list interface supports indexing set interface does not support indexing but both have a common behavior that it represents a group of individual objects as a single entity let us go and look at the diagram of the set the hierarchy rather of set so set is also a child of the collection interface okay so that is why set is below the collection and set has two classes implementing it one is the hash set one is the linked hash set so hash set and linked hash set are nothing but two classes implementing the set interface and linked hash set is a subclass of hash set class as well as collection is concerned it was released in 1.2 version of jdk set was also released in 1.2 version of jdk hash set was also released in 1.2 version of jdk whereas linked hash set was released in 1.4 version of jdk and this particular slide gives you the difference between the list and the set interface list interface allows duplications of data set interface does not allow duplications of data in list indexing order is preserved in set indexing order is not preserved let's go to the fourth interface present in collection framework the fourth interface is your sorted set interface the sorted set interface is a child interface of set interface and set interface is a child interface of collection interface now what is the usage of set, sorted set interface if we want to represent a group of individual objects as a single entity where duplications of data are not allowed but objects are inserted according to some sorting order then we should go for set interface sorry sub uh, sorted set interface so there's a typo out here this is not set interface but sorted set interface let's understand that so sorted set interface is a child interface of set interface in set interface no duplications of data is allowed similarly in sorted set also no duplication of data is allowed in set interface there is no indexing preferred but in sorted set interface objects are inser inserted according to some sorting order that is the difference so let us look at the uh, fifth interface out here the navigable interface the navigable interface is a child interface of set okay and it defines several methods or functions for navigable purpose and this is a specific diagram in hierarchy of the navigable interface which is the fifth interface of collection framework first we have the collection interface which is inherited by the set interface the set in interface in in inherited by the sorted set interface and the sorted set interface is inherited by the navigable set interface and if you see out here navigable set has a class which is called the tree set class the tree set class is actually implementing the navigable set interface okay so this is how the diagram looks like if you look at collection interface set interface sorted set interface was released in 1.2 version of jdk navigable set interface was released in 1.6 version of jdk tree set class which implements the navigable set interface was released in 1.2 version of jdk let's come to the sixth interface present in collection framework the sixth interface is called the q interface q interface is also a child interface of collection interface it's a child interface which inherits the collection interface and what do you mean by q interface if you want to represent a group of individual objects prior to processing then we should go for q interface so representing a group of individual objects prior to processing then we should go for q interface what do you mean by that for example we have an outlook email now let's say we are sending 10 emails in from outlook email one by one so the first email that is being sent will go out of the system first and this 10th email will go out of the system after the first nine gets out of the system that means first in uh, is first out so first email being sent will be sent first second email will be sent after the first email is sent similarly the 10th email will be sent after the ninth email is sent from the outlook screen that is nothing but a queue system 
and this is the uh, diagram of the queue interface the queue interface will look like it is also a interface which is inheriting the collection interface and queue interface has certain classes implementing it the priority queue class and the blocking queue class so these two classes are major classes which are implementing the queue interface directly whereas we have another two classes called as linked blocking queue class and priority blocking queue class these two do have the same hierarchy but they are inheriting the blocking queue class and indirectly obviously the linked blocking queue class and the priority blocking queue class will also use the abstract methods of the queue interface and the collection interface by default because the diagram makes you understand that that collection interface is inherited by the queue interface and queue interface is implemented by the priority queue interface sorry priority queue class and the blocking queue class the blocking queue class is inherited by the linked blocking queue class and the priority blocking queue class so obviously the linked blocking queue class and the priority blocking queue class will use the classes and methods of the blocking queue class plus it will also use the abstract methods in the queue interface and the collection interface by itself if you look at the version release of collection interface it still remains at 1.2 jdk version queue was also was released in 1.5 version of jdk priority queue class and blocking queue class were both released in 1.5 version of jdk whereas linked blocking queue class and priority blocking queue class which are classes inheriting the blocking queue class are also released in 1.5 version of jdk this is how it looks like properly then we go to the seventh interface present in collection framework that is called the map interface map interface is not a child of collection interface okay now what is a map interface if we want to represent a group of individual objects in key value pairs then we should go for map interface so representing a group of individual objects in key value pairs not as a single entity here you are representing the group of individual objects in key value pairs then we should go for map interface and here both keys and values are objects please understand that where keys cannot be duplicated but values can be duplicated and this is the general mapping of map interface if you look at map interface out here the map interface has five direct classes implementing it the five direct classes implementing it are hash map peak hash map identity hash map and hash table these are the four classes which are directly implementing the map interface the linked hash map is a subclass of hash map whereas the hash table has two classes inheriting it the two classes inheriting the hash table class is the dictionary class and the properties class that means properties class is a subclass of hash table and dictionary class is a subclass of hash table and in other words if we look at from the dictionary point of view the dictionary class is inheriting the hash table that that means it can use the methods uh, and the variables present in the hash table class plus it also indirectly implements the map interface by default and that's why it can use the abstract methods present in the map interface if you look at the version release map hash map class there is map interface hash map class weak hash map class were released in 1.2 version of jdk Li linked hash map was also released in 1.2 version of jdk identity hash map class was released in 1.4 version of jdk dictionary hash table and properties class were released in 1.0 version of jdk let's look at the eighth interface present in collection framework the eighth interface is your sorted map interface the sorted map interface is a child interface of map interface if you want to represent a group of key value pairs according to some sorting order of keys then we should go for sorted map interface so if you want to represent a group of key value pairs according to some sorting order that means some indexing format then we should go for sorted map interface 
both keys and values are objects keys cannot be duplicated and values cannot be duplicated but, sorry values can be duplicated out here and this is how the look of sorted map is in terms of hierarchy sorted map is actually inheriting the map interface and sorted map interface was released in 1.2 version and map was also released in 1.2 version of jdk the last interface present in collection framework is the navigable map interface it is a child interface of sorted map interface it defines several utility methods for navigable purpose and this is how the diagram looks like the hierarchy looks like navigable map is inheriting the sorted map interface the navigable map interface is indirectly inheriting the map interface if you can see in this particular diagram because map interface is inherited directly by sorted map and sorted map interface is directly inherited by navigable map so in other words we can say that navigable map interface is inheriting the map interface by itself and navigable map has a particular class implementing it the class which implements the navigable map interface is called the tree map class if you look at this particular diagram the map interface the sorted map interface was released in 1.2 version of jdk the navigable map was released in 1.6 version of jdk and tree map class was released in 1.2 version of jdk this is the co complete overview of the collection framework so in one portion we have the collection interface which is implemented directly by list interface set interface and queue interface list interface has a list class linked list class and vector class which is implementing the list interface directly the vector class is inherited by the stack class and this vector and stack class are called as legacy classes the other part of it is the set interface the set interface is in also in directly inheriting the collection interface the set interface has couple of classes implementing it the direct class which are implementing the set interface is hash set and sorted set hash set is basically a class where a sorted set is the interface by itself the sorted set interface is implemented by the navigable set interface and navigable set interface has a class implementing it called the tree set class the hash set interface is sorry not hash set interface hash set is a class the hash set class is inherited by the linked uh, hash set class the queue part the queue interface yeah, is in implemented by two different classes the priority queue class and the blocking queue class the blocking queue class has two classes implementing uh, inheriting it the priority blocking queue class and the linked blocking queue class this is part of the collection interface by itself uh, in terms of map interface it is this is how the diagram looks like so that's about it uh, in the next session or the next video we will see some examples of the collection api we will see an example of set interface and we will see an example of list interface we will see an example of map interface i'm going to only cover these three interfaces because the rest of the interface and their methods can be seen by you i'm going to cover these three interfaces because these three are important for the purpose of our understanding of uh, selenium and they are extensively used in selenium that is why i restricted myself to, to these three interfaces and their examples if you want to basically learn the other interfaces present in the collection API, uh, I would request you to do so. Thanks very much.